going on, you guys? It's Gabriel Figaro right here. I'm back. <laughs> Some of you might be asking, oh, Gabriel, you've been gone for so long. Gabriel, you look so different from the last time I remember you. Hold your breath starting now. <laughs> the short story is that I became a Christian around August, and I didn't feel like the need to post uh, tech videos, A, because I had way, way too much school. Um, I'm a senior, and I just didn't have that passion anymore to do tech. But now I'm back on YouTube and I'm gonna start posting Christian content. <laughs> like I do on my TikTok and on Instagram. If you don't follow me, what are you doing? Go follow my TikTok. It's, it's at live.gabriel and my Instagram is Gabriel underscore Figueroa. I'll leave it all in the description below. But that's the besides the point. <laughs> but besides that point, today's video is gonna be about how to flee from lust. So the tips I'm gonna give you in this video is to help you to break free and to flee from free. Break free from lust and to flee from it. Like Jesus has set me free from it. So I'm not saying that to say that I'm better than you. I'm saying that that freedom is possible through Christ because I know how difficult it is. I know the challenges I was in that road for around four years. So I know how it feels. And another reason is that I get this question asked a lot by a lot of people on my Instagram and on TikTok. This is like a disclaimer from the enemy. Uh, this is like a lie that he tells people that they can never be set free from lust or that, oh, you're going to be stuck here forever. So just why not just give into it and just get used to it? That is the biggest lie from the enemy. He just wants you to continue in sin because guys, the bad thing about sin is that it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. It never stays the same, right? A sin is like, like a snowball rolling down the hill. It just keeps going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Let's get started with the first tip I always give to people is that you really, really, really want to be set free from lust. Flee from lust is not required only 50%. It needs 100% commitment. Like It desperately needs even 110% commitment from your part. God will do the rest, but he needs you to be committed to it, guys. Because if 60% of you wants to stay in lust and the other 40% wants to uh, get out of it, who do you think is going to win? Obviously, the 60%. So you need to be 110% committed of trying to break free from lust. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention in the beginning of the video, lust is like masturbation, pornography, homosexuality, and all other types of perversions. All the tips in this video will apply to every single one how to break free from all those types of lusts. But like, as I was saying, like you really, really, really gotta hate this sin. Like, you really, really like, gotta have like this deep hatred for this sin and you really, really wanna get out. That and like, it'll make you do like whatever it takes to make you get out. The second tip is you gotta pursue God like crazy. Like I'm kid you not like crazy. I'm just gonna assume that most of you guys do not read your Bibles in the morning, but that is extremely, extremely important. You shouldn't be going on social media in the morning. You shouldn't be scrolling on Instagram or TikTok or just watching YouTube videos and just lay on your bed like this, right? Like you shouldn't be doing that because you're just feeding your flesh and not your spirit. Like how do you how do you feed the Holy Spirit with that? You can't, right? So I want you, the first thing I want you to do is once you get up, I want you to go brush your teeth, go to use the bathroom, and then go back into your room and then start reading the Bible. You know, having your own, person, your own personal time with God, pray to God and all these different things, even to listen to worship music. Guys, I'm telling you this right now, like it's, I'm telling you, and I'm stretching, and I'm stretching. <laughs> I'm stressing this urgency because this is probably the best way to get set free from lust. Like I'm telling, I've tried everything, cold showers, working out, I've done everything. It doesn't work. The only way that works, the only thing that works is pursuing God. That's it. Right? That, that, that's like the key. That's like the foundation for every other tip that I'm going to say in this video. It being the foundation, it is probably the hardest tip in this video to follow. And some days it's going to feel like a chore. And I understand how that feels, right? Some days I get up, I'm like, oh man, I really don't want to read my Bible. But just stick to it. I stick through it. I stick through it because I knew that if I don't read my Bible, I'm just going to feed my flesh the whole entire day. And that is not good. That is not good. You need to feed the Holy Spirit that is in you. You need to feed it. If you don't know what the flesh is, the flesh is a sinful nature in you. If the flesh is pretty much like the thing that wants to lust. Also by pursuing God, you're gonna have to start cutting off things in your life. Like for me personally, I had to cut off a relationship and music. So like, for example, if your relationship is glorifying sin, you, you're you gonna have to break that off because God is not blessing that. And that is literally like preventing you from not break free from lust. Like you're literally engaging in lust. So you're gonna have to break that off. And music, you already know how the music is nowadays. You know, they talk about drugs, sex, money, like, all these bad things. And don't even listen to the clean version, guys. Don't come on. Just listen to only worship music that glorifies God. Let's say you're following what I'm what I'm saying right now, right? You've been reading your Bible in the morning. You've been listening to only worship music. 
But eventually your flesh wants to go back to sin, right? Because your flesh wants to be comfortable. It doesn't want to be uncomfortable, which leads us to the third tip. Temptation. Oh, and I have my glasses on. Amazing. A good question to ask, but Gabriel, why do I get temptations in the first place? Where do they even come from? That's a good question to ask. So let's go to the Bible and go to the book of James, chapter 1, verse 14. Almost there, almost there. Awesome. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his, by his own desires and enticed. You see, that pretty much means that the flesh wants to go back, right? The flesh is like, yo, like, why are we not doing this? This felt good. Why can't we just go back, right? Go back. Come on, let's go back. And then it's going to start telling you, hey, let's let's go back. Come on, let's, what's wrong with it? Let's go, go back. back. Hey, bro, the temptation is so strong, Gabriel. I can't do it. Gabriel, I can't do it. Well, let's read a promise from God himself about temptation. Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. And who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. What happens if I bear temptation, Gabriel? Let's go back. To the book of James, chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. You literally get blessings from God when you endure temptations. Also, when you endure temptation, you are strengthening the Holy Spirit and weakening your flesh because you're saying no to your flesh. You're literally saying, nope, I'm not doing it. And your flesh is like, but why? No. And you literally have more control. And one of the proofs of the spirits is self-control. You might be saying, oh, oh, but that's cool and all, game. But how do I fight temptation? Well, grab your Bible again. We're not done. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. Also, the context for this story is that Jesus was getting tempted in the desert. And so, like, even Jesus was tempted. Then Jesus said to him, which is Satan, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. All Jesus used was scripture. That's it. He didn't use his flesh because his flesh wants to give in. So why would you want to use your flesh to help you escape temptation? No, Jesus used scripture. And in the Bible, it says scripture is a double-edged sword. It's pretty much your weapon to fight against the devil. So I want you to start memorizing scripture about lust. A Bible verse that I use personally when I'm facing temptation is James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. There's so many other uh, Bible verses about lust. One is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, and Job chapter 31, verse 1. Okay, and these are some tips of not to do during temptation. So do not, I, I repeat, do not make a movie out in your head of you actually go sinning and like, okay, let's let's make a movie. Okay, let me go sin and then do that. No, stop. Because at that point, you already lost. You already gave into your temptation. Or just do not stand idle. Do not. It's like it's like you're just doing this and someone's like, boo, 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 boo. people are just punching you back and forth and you're just standing idle. You're gonna give in. You're gonna give in to that. So do not stand idle. Just fight. Like literally, immediately once the temptation comes. You need to fight it with scripture. You cannot stand idle and you cannot make a movie. Keep that in mind. The temptation does not last forever. We have this misconception sometimes where like, oh my gosh, this is never going to end. It is going to end. Temptation is not going to last the whole entire day. It's only going to last from 5 to 15 minutes, right? And all you got to do is just fight, fight scripture and you eventually literally just fade away. You literally just forget about it. And do not put yourself in places you know you're going to get tempted. Like we're not stupid, right? Like let's say, okay, for example, for example, I'm on a diet, right? I'm skinny, but let's say I'm on a diet, right? And I'm not allowed to eat any fast food. So why would I go to the mall when the mall has a lot of fast food, like the food court? You see how dumb that is? Like I supposedly just walk myself to the food court because I got to go use the bathroom when there's other bathrooms. That's a, that's like an example of putting yourself in a tempting situation. Another example is if you stay up late, you're going to start having lustful thoughts, which is most of you start sleeping early, right? Because you know, okay, let's say, if you know, like if you stay up at two in the morning, right? And you know, lustful thoughts come a lot at two in the morning. 
Don't stay up till 2 in the morning. morning. Don't think, oh, I got scripture now, I can fight it. No, just don't stay up till 2 in the morning. Just sleep at 11 or 12. Okay, Gabriel, but I tried and tried and tried and tried my best, but I fell into temptation. Ah! What do I do? You first got to confess your sins to God and ask for forgiveness. Because once you hear yourself saying, God, I've fallen, God, at this, God, that, you're going to start feeling so bad. You're going to start feeling his hatred for this sin. And you're going to start wanting to pursue God even more than the last time. A lot of us have this misconception that God holds grudges, right? Or once you ask for forgiveness, God will forgive you in that instant. God will no longer remember no more. So if you still feel like there's still like a grudge or like, I don't know, I don't think God has forgiven me. That's just the devil making you think that so you can continue going back to your sin. Why? Because like, like if we fell back into sin, we don't want to go to God. Why? Because we feel so guilty, right? So us, if the devil keeps us guilty, the, the likelihood we're just going to go right back to our sin. But it is important to confess that sin to someone else, which leads me to tip number four is accountability. Do not believe the lie that you can beat lust by yourself. You don't need anybody. That is simply a lie. Go to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 10. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. I think I'm done. No, I'm not. Go to Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17. As iron sharpens iron, so it man sharpens the countenance of his friend. You think I'm done? No, I'm not. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. All right, this is the last verse, I promise. Go to James chapter 5, verse 16. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective ferment prayer of a righteous man avails much. You guys, we all need accountability. The Bible does not say to go hide your sin. The Bible literally encourages us and tells us to bring this sin to light. Personally, for me, I had accountability for me to be set free from lust. And I told the person if I were to fall back into sin, I will give them 20 bucks. And 20 bucks was literally the last type of money I had. Like it was nothing anymore. After that, if I, if I fell back into sin, I'll literally have no more money to spend anymore. No, it may seem hard and difficult to open up to someone about this, right? Because like no one wants to admit that they're struggling to something, right? Because it brings what? It brings guilt and shame. But this is crucial to being set free from lust. Because there's going to be some days where you don't want to pursue God. There's going to be some days where you're not feeling it, right? And your accountability partner is there to keep you in check. Also, who likes to tell someone that they fell into sin? I, like I hate to tell someone that, right? Which makes me not want to do what? It makes me not want to fall, fall into sin in the first place because I don't want to tell someone, hey, you know, I fell into sin because that's embarrassing, bro. That's shameful. It, it, it literally is like, oh, uh, like it, it sucks. It really sucks. It's literally not going to make you want to do it in the first place because you're going to be like this. You're going to be thinking like, man, I really do not want to fall into sin. Right? For me personally, I was just like, man, I do not want to get 20 bucks. That's, that's the last of my money, right? That's it. You know? That's the last of it. I want to give that away, right? So it made me not want to fall into sin. But Gabriel, I can lie to them. But if you're going to lie to them, well, you're just showing, you're just pretty much showing that you don't want to be set free. You don't want to flee from lust. Also, a key in choosing an accountability partner is that the accountability partner cannot be struggling the same thing that you're struggling with. So, for example, if you're struggling with pornography, your accountability partner cannot be struggling with pornography as well. They have to be set free or not struggle with it to begin with. And they must check up on you every single day day to make sure that you're doing good well, that's it guys i know this was a long video these are four tips to set free or to flee from lust let me know what type of video you guys want me to make next if you haven't already while you're down there commenting i want you to go like this video and subscribe hit that subscribe button for more christian content thank you guys for watching and i'll see you around praise god peace